Yo, listen up, we're in Cleveland, and poor Edge here is stuck in a blue world. And all day and all night inside the arena, he was feeling blue, inside and outside. Blue is house with the blue rear window and a blue Corvette. What does this even fucking mean? He was all blue, no matter what he tried, and he had no one that would listen. Edge was blue, da ba dee da ba die. He was blue, da ba dee da ba dee da ba die. At least it wasn't the Benoit household where Nancy and Daniel were blue. Oh shit, hide your kids and your wives, hide your kids and your wives, hide your kids and your wives. What the fuck am I doing to this song? Good luck on hearing it from now on. I'm John Renton with my review of WWE Raw from Cleveland, Ohio. I mean Cleveland, Ohio, and provided that anybody is still tuned in after that terrible, terrible rendition of Eiffel 65's Blue Dabba Dee Dabba. Okay, I'm done. This show, we are on the show to WrestleMania, the most stupendous two-night WrestleMania in WWE history, and, well, they certainly tried in the beginning of this show, and then they tried at the end. They tried some other stuff. They also had a couple of the worst goddamn segments that I've seen in quite a while, and that's covering a lot of goddamn ground. So anyway, recaps of Bork being dominated and talked by Roman, because Roman was just pointing at him. Just pointing at him and saying, acknowledge my meat. I think that's what he was saying. Hit the MSG spot. Bork, what the hell's wrong with you? $12 million, you can't hit Roman's MSG spot. Happens to the best of us. I don't know what's going on. So, the new Raw theme is absolute ass. Get this fucking bullshit rap out of wrestling. If you're not going to have good rap, why have any rap at all? So anyway, Owens and Rollins are coming down to talk about how they've been shafted brutally, mightily, Shafted repeatedly. No wonder Rollins is laughing so much. And no wonder Kevin Owens talks about everything being stupendous. This is the most stupendous shafting in WWE history. Gross. Well, this side of Heidenreich and Michael Cole, the first ever poetry slam. This review might as well just have a whole bunch of jokes because Raw, at this point, is a fucking joke. <clears throat> they, they knock Dallas and everything. They complain about all the problems. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. You honestly could have copy and pasted the opening from last week's show to this, and it would have been the same goddamn thing. I mean, and I get it. I really fucking get it. They don't have a lot of material because Vince McMahon creatively is just fucking shot if that Pat McAfee interview told us anything. And it didn't tell us all that much. It did tell us that Vince McMahon looks like Clay Fighter, Clay Clay Fighter. Oh my God, his face is falling off. Ooh. Anyway. <laughs> They're talking, doing all their stuff, and they add the shoot sound to uh, Alpha Academy's theme. Just give Gable and Majin Buu their release papers. Just give them their fucking release. Vince, you goddamn idiot. Bruce Pritchard, Kevin, whoever came up with this idea, deserves to be brutally beaten with a stick until they aren't moving anymore. This is terrible, and I know some people like Gable. And Gable's doing the best he can, but it's not any fucking good. And then Orton and Riddle are fired up. Did somebody say something about getting fired up? <sighs> RK Bro, Owens and Rollins, and Gable and Majin Buu had a three-way Raw tag title match. And let me just say, the match was really good. It was. A lot of really good moves. A lot of moves. And a lot of double teaming. And triple teaming. Sometimes they would just have two people in the ring. This time they decided to have one member of each team in the ring. Why not just have the cotton candy vendors there too? Everybody get in here. We'll see you next time for the Royal Rumble. Oh wait, no, that was about, uh, you know, just about five weeks ago. Look, was there was there good action here? Yes, as I just said. I also didn't give a shit. I'm sorry, but WWE has conditioned me to not really care about a lot of tag team wrestling because no matter how much I want to get invested in what WWE does with tag team wrestling, I know that Vince McMahon's never going to feature tag teams properly. <laughs> Orton and Riddle are a makeshift team. Owens and Rollins are a makeshift team. I mean, and Gable and Majin Buu, and yes, I know that they were, he's either Majin Buu or one of the Thumb Soldiers and Spy Kids. I can't fucking unsee it. It's a bunch of teams that are just makeshift. I'm sorry, it doesn't, it, action aside, it doesn't fucking click. If you're not going to make you know, a tag team, you know, out of like two proper, if you're not going to make them proper tag teams, don't fucking have a tag team division. Just abolish it. Stop. Don't do this anymore. All right, we get a little action, we go to the break. We went through three breaks. Three breaks. 
three breaks. Do, 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 do. We went through three breaks because they had nothing for the show. And based on the next couple segments they had after this, I'm not really fucking surprised they had this match go that long. <laughs> um... So we did get a nice delayed tower of doom, 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 doom. Um, and well, eventually we did get an art. We got Gable doing a moonsault to or a backflip to nobody, and Orton catches him in RKO. That's one of the best RKOs, and it was in a match that not a lot of people are going to be talking about in a little bit, unfortunately. And by the way. I kind of killed the three-way that was at AEW Revolution last night, so you can go back and check out that review if you want, because there ain't no bias here. If something's really goddamn good, tag team wrestling or otherwise, I'm going to praise it. So, <clears throat> we get super kick, super kick party. Well, no, wait, Owens and Rollins can wrestle, unlike the, unlike the guys that do the super kick party. We get a stump, Riddle tosses Rollins out and covers Gable 1-2-3. Thanks for coming, Gable. That little resurgence didn't last very fucking long. <clears throat> One loss is not going to automatically kill the goddamn company, or kill the goddamn gimmick, character, whatever. Stupid. It's stupid. Let's take the titles off of them. Let's give them the, let's give them the Gable and Majin Buu for a little bit, and let's just have Riddle and Orton win him back for no goddamn reason, because we have no plans, because ha <laughs> I don't care about tag team wrestling, pal. It's such good shot. Ha <laughs> ha I'm a genius, damn it. So... Yeah, that was pretty much it. So G Gable and Majin Buu lose the tag titles, and not that they meant anything anyway, but... Um, Steve Patrick interviews RK Bro, and Orton says that Riddle is my friend. Friend. Good. Fire. Bad. <sighs> Steve Patrick is all over this goddamn show, by the way. The 24-7 championship is useless. Too much fucking romance. Fuck it all. Fuck romance. Fuck anybody who likes it. Kidding, if you like romance. If you have somebody, great. Talking about somebody who's been happily single and very bitterly single for a while. And guess what? I don't need I don't need romance in my NXT 2.0. I don't need romance here. I don't need... Ro SmackDown, for all its faults, is more sports-based and everything. <sighs> Just, they gotta try hard to not <clears throat> have stupid romance. It's fucking ridiculous. So, Tamina with Tozawa versus Dana with Reggie. 24-7 championship match. What was Tamina's theme? Oh, no, Tamina, uh, Snuka being force, uh, forceful with somebody in a relationship. Watch out for the stairs, Tozawa. Oh, no, don't trip trying to get back to the car. Jimmy Snuka burning in hell as he should be. So, oh, Snuka in, in, incapacitating a woman again. Man, she, just, she was just laying there, and I don't know what happened. <clears throat> The most devastating maneuver in all of professional wrestling, the surprise roll up one, two, three. Tozawa then confesses his love for Tamina. Can Tozawa go somewhere where he is not uh, you know, treated like a goddamn joke? I'm not saying the guy is ever going to be a world champion anywhere, anywhere reputable. This is ridiculous. The ninja outfit, all that, it's stupid, it's ridiculous. There's nothing wrong with having fun in wrestling. This isn't fun. Steve Patrick was trying to get an answer from Seth, and Seth was just staring in the middle distance like he just found out that Becky suddenly is going to have another kid. She was out due to a fractured voice box or whatever. Man, you would almost think that uh, Snooka or Benoit got to her because fractured voice boxes were their specialty when it came to women. Anyway, Miz gets a hometown pop. And Cleveland, man, they were just cheering this Usher on. Oh, wait, it was Miz. It wasn't, wasn't Usher. Usher's got the, you know... Feeling to make your boot... Uh, anyway, enough of that song. Boy, I can't really get that right. Couldn't sound more white if I tried. I refuse to believe that Logan Paul actually graduated high school without getting a lot of fucking help because he's not very properly educated. You know, the guy that filmed the uh, dead body in that Japanese forest. And does this stuff and whatever. We're doing this Miz Logan Paul Mysterios match, which is automatically on the worst matches of the year list. Has no right existing at WrestleMania or on any show. Is Jerry Lawler legally allowed to be this close to the children in the goddamn crowd? I don't think so. What was what was the point of this segment to bring a WrestleMania to Cleveland? If Cle I mean, if they want to have it at Cleveland, you know, the Cleveland Indian Stadium or Cleveland Guardians or whatever they're calling them right now, fine. I mean, there are worse cities to have it in. If you want to have it in the big stadium, okay, April in Cleveland might be a little bit of a little bit dicey. Hell, they could have had it there this year. We're not going to have baseball right off the bat, which I used to care about and I don't anymore. But if you care about baseball, I'm very sorry that everybody is just getting in a pissing contest over money. 
Steve Patrick interviews Trumpa and Steiner. And yeah, Rex Steiner is on, on the show automatically. His Raw debut, and he made his wrestling debut, or he started training, what, like a year ago? About a year, maybe in a month ago? Good Lord. I want to go back to that Logan Paul, Miz, Jerry Lawler segment. One of the worst things I've seen, but the reason I'm not even going to dive too much into it is, one, you can pick on Logan Paul plenty. You can pick on Jerry Lawler plenty. And I will. Constantly. Because it's what they fucking deserve. But it was one of the most pointless segments that I've fucking seen. Gable Stevenson. Oh my goodness. You want to talk about somebody that's your team with Riddle? They could be team. Won't take no for an answer. And you know, you know. And guess what? Technicalities or not, Gable knows what he did. Karma's going to get you. That's why you don't take advantage of women like that. That's why you don't take advantage of anybody like that. Read up on it, guys. <clears throat> there, where there's smoke, there's fire. Hell of an athlete, though. Wouldn't be the first time WWE employed an abuser. So, Sarah, Sarah, good God. Sarah uh, Schreiber, good Lord. Somebody suggested they should bring back Sarah Logan. No, the last thing they need is an anti-vax motherfucking idiot like Sarah Logan. And just read her Instagram post. And then you'll feel something cold and metallic, like a baton that you want to take to your head. So you don't have to read anything more from this goddamn twat. So, the prophets still want the smoke. Where is the smoke coming from? I don't know. I don't care. So the Steinerized video package for his Raw debut, it is Steiner and Ciampa against Dolphin Root. Ah! And what they have? They had a precursor to the three-way match we're going to get, oh my, tomorrow on NXT 2.0. How will Steiner do? Did pretty well. I mean, Root and Ziggler are professionals and have been doing this long enough where they did some good stuff. We got a hot tag to Steiner. And he got that press, you know, power slam, one, two, three. I think he did pretty well. I don't know if Cleveland was the right city to debut him in, and nothing against Cleveland. There are some good wrestling fans, and, you know, a bit of history as far as Cleveland wrestling, but it's just, lately, their shows have been kind of eh. I mean, let's be honest, we had AEW's Beach Break. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, Beach Break, we had the Lights Out match. Radham Cole, baby, lost to a hug. Boy. Maybe being the manager wouldn't have been so bad after that. So, anyway, Ziggler's hair was making a run for it. As was everybody else who was watching this show at this point. All right, not a bad match, though. And here's a question. Why did they put the camera on the floor to shoot Edward James almost like he was 25 feet tall? Why did they make it seem like Sarah was on the floor? Sarah on the floor. Never mind. Why was she interviewing him while on the floor? Just going to move on from this. Edward James almost was uh, taking on Apollo. And Commander Aziz was also there. Whew! We get a choke bomb for three. Thanks for coming, Apollo. We wish you the best in your future endeavors. Aziz and Edward James almost stare down. <laughs> By the way, WrestleMania, of course, is still the most stupendous two night uh, WrestleMania in WWE history, or in history, or in all of history. In record history, they might, you know, solve a mystery and rewrite WWE history. Wait, Vince never does that. Woohoo! Ha ha! So, everybody was questioning last week why a Canadian wrestler slash family man resorted to insane amounts of violence to deal with his fan, to deal with somebody else or whatever, deal with somebody with long hair and everything, and he just got the pillow, pressed it, he got the chair, and hit it down on his head or whatever. A concerto might have solved things a whole lot better in June of 2007. So, here's the underedge. Man, he was in a blue world. Why did they make it like he was in this ominous blue light? Was it the Kmart blue light special? Does anybody remember Kmart? Do Kmarts even still exist in this country? We used to have about, have about like 12. We don't got any more. They were actually massive stores. There was one in town or whatever. It was like about, it was like about you know, five football fields. It was incredible. So, he talks about, you know, mounting his omnipotence. I think that's how it, uh, how it went. And he talked about being in control and being AJ Styles. And I understand that AJ Styles is still being kept in the local medical facility for a neck contusion and anal bleeding. What? Wow. Good promo from Edge, I guess. The blue lighting just made me think, it's like, my God, he smurfed himself. It's like Smurfette, you know, being the uh, village bicycle and everybody had a ride there. Why did I make Smurfette out to be that? She was the only woman in the entire village. Just saying. 
<clears throat> if, if she withheld, everybody would have literal blue balls. Enough knocking the Smurfs for no reason. Don't know where I'm going with that. Owen says he has plans to go to WrestleMania, and tonight we will find out what they are. Liv likes seeing Rhea's brutality up close. Here, you stop. Once again, stop thinking about it. I know you're thinking about it. You stop it. You get some help. Seriously, there is not one person, you know, that wants to see that wants to see what somebody is going to think of Liv. Liv loving Rhea's brutality. Not that I would love Rhea's brutality. I certainly wouldn't want Rhea to just toss me around, step on me, and just berate me right there in front of God and everybody. Care, stop thinking about it. Anyway, let's just talk about <clears throat> clips of Bork and Roman at MSG. Rhea and Liv against Lena and Carmella. This fucking gimp mask stuff. Granted, Carmella couldn't look any fucking worse than she does. She couldn't wrestle any worse either. Seriously, it is like watching a two-legged gazelle. One front leg, one bat leg, and, you know, the others were just chewed off by goddamn alligators or seemingly chewed off by the goddamn leprosy that comes from anybody that has to endure watching her wrestle. In fact, actually getting that would be more preferable than watching her wrestle because she fucking sucks at what she does. But <clears throat> Rhea, I just want to know why Rhea is not on top. Of the women's division. You thought I was going to be dirty. And I wasn't dirty at all. Because I run a clean show. So Corey talks about the upcoming wedding. Between him and Carmella. Jeez you know I wonder. I wonder what's going to happen. When Corey ends up leaving Carmella. Like he did his ex-wife. You know the one that has the three kids. That gave birth to the three kids. And one the special needs. And the woman that stuck by him. While he had his little brain hurting. And everything. And they gave him an announcer's job. Because they felt bad for him. And now he thinks that he's good at what he does. And then he'll leave uh, Carmella for somebody younger and more burnt like beef jerky. It'll be like barbecue beef jerky. It'll be like Final Destination 3 on steroids. Riptide, one, two, three. I like how Rhea folded up Selena. I wish it was me. It should have been me. Shut up. Stop accusing me of it. And then Liv and Rhea get very close to each other. Now kiss. Okay. Provided that any women are still watching this show, which I doubt any were watching to begin with. Let's talk about um, how they could have inducted Vader years before when he was still alive, but no, Vince had to hold on to petty grudges. Would also like to mention that Vader should have been WWE champion, but no, Shawn Michaels threw a bitch fit. And now he can see in two different directions, and neither of them are taking him anywhere good. And by the way, just because he found God doesn't mean that he's any less of a prick. Vader should have been WWE champion, one of the best big men, one of the most athletic super heavyweights ever. Great run in New Japan. <clears throat> Great run in WCW. I really wish that he had gotten a proper run in WWE. I'm not saying at that point that he would have been a long-running WWE champion, but it's just a shame. So anyway, Theory and Balor had a contenders match? Seemingly? Maybe? I don't know. It ended when Priest decided to choke out Balor. Rox, you stop thinking about Priest choking. You stop it. You stop, you get some help. Um, and Balor got a selfie taken while he was laying down and holding his throat after Priest decided to go all choky and everything. <sighs> Bianca says that she will beat Becky at Mania. She will lash her and then, you know, target her throat and fracture her voice box even more. Or maybe that, I'm not actually sure. I hope that Becky's actually okay and they're just working this. But she was in the hospital, <coughs> so hopefully she's going to be all right. I'd say just get flashcards and do her stuff like that. People say she was, uh, you know, would be taking Sammy Guevara's uh, gimmick. No, 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 no. She'd have to say that she's going to rake somebody. That's what it was. That's what he meant. No. You don't say that stuff. That's just, just saying. Y you know not to say that shit. So yeah, you paid for you paid for it, and you keep and you keep getting um, hammered on about it. But whatever. Becky will be at WrestleMania. Unless complications arise. Owens comes down. We go to a break. He talks about the KO show featuring somebody from Texas. Not JBL. Not Booker with the stupid accent. Yet he uses King Booker. Shawn Michaels. No, I'm Canadian. And I'm, I like Bret Hart. And Bret was right. Bret was right, by the way. Shawn's always been a prick. But Bret gave, uh, forgave Shawn. Good for him. I haven't. But whatever. And it's going to be Austin on the KO show. They're going to find a way to have everybody beat up, or not beat up Austin, but beat up Owens. JBL, Sean, uh, Booker, and Austin are going to beat him up. And that's going to be it. 
They should get Kevin Von Erich there and he could put the claw on him. Except I don't think Kevin will want to come from Hawaii and do that. <clears throat> but Owen says he's going to give him a stunner. Ten doll stunners. A stunner for the world to see. And that was raw. That was it for that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.